this is the one that's really gonna get people and honestly kind of like eats away at me inside. Folks, I can't, I just can't ditch it, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's up everybody? We're gonna be talking about ultralight backpacking today, everybody's favorite topic. As I think I've said before in various videos, and I've definitely said this before on my podcast Trail Tales, I've had the same gear setup for like the past five years pretty much, four or five years, and as a result I haven't really been that excited about gear. I mean sure I talk about it on this channel, but I usually don't get too specific. And I gotta be honest, lately, like the past couple weeks, I've been going down the rabbit hole of researching backpacking gear and, and weighing things and all that stuff again. And for the first time in literally like four years, I actually feel like I'm excited to talk about gear and stuff again. So this ultralight stuff has been on my mind. And one thing in particular that I've been thinking about a lot is the crazy lengths that, <clears throat> the crazy lengths, lengths, <laughs> the crazy lengths, God damn it. The crazy lengths that I, I'm just gonna say something else. The crazy sh that people do in order to go ultra light. And I'm not gonna lie, I do try to go as light as possible. Yes, I've cut my toothbrush in half and, and done some dumb sh like that. But there are still a number of gear items that I take with me that I just can't bring myself to let go. Even though I've seen other like crazy ultra light hikers not hike with them. And honestly, the thing about this is these aren't even like luxury items. These, in my opinion, are all fairly essential items. So I just want to acknowledge that a lot of ultralight hikers still carry these items. So I'm not saying that all ultralight hikers are crazy and leave behind really important stuff, but let me know what you guys think of this list in the comments. Let me know what some of like the craziest things you've seen people do to go ultralight are. And yeah, let's just have a discussion about ultralight backpacking. Let me know what you think of this list. And let's do it, let's get into item number one. I don't know why I'm confused. I just felt like that was awkward, but f it, here we go. All right, so backpacking gear item number one that I refuse to ditch for ultralight hiking is my water filter. Now, again, I know most ultralight hikers still carry a water filter. I'm not saying that all ultralight people are crazy and don't carry a filter, but I'm sure you guys have seen examples of people on the trail before that do not carry a water filter and inevitably end up shitting their pants. If you're using a Sawyer squeeze like I do and have been for the past like five years, you could save three ounces by leaving it at home, but is it really worth it? Like it really doesn't weigh that much. Now I've definitely been like super far into the backcountry before or like really high up on a mountain where I've seen like a crystal clear stream, something that looks like so fresh, so natural. It's water, obviously it's natural. The kind of stream where you look at it and you're like, okay, probably don't need to filter that. But on the other hand, I've also seen streams where I'm literally standing right next to a, a farm field, for instance, and I know for a fact there's just cows shitting that it's just running right into the water, or if you're near a road or something like that. I feel like if I didn't have a filter, I would honestly probably get really dehydrated because I would just be super sketch and hesitant about like every water source that I see to make sure it was like super clean so I don't get sick. Although I guess to be fair, if you're not gonna bring a filter, you probably aren't that sketch about water sources, but anyways, the filter is lightweight. It gives you a lot of peace of mind and it could potentially literally save your ass while you're hiking. So I'm always gonna bring it, I'm sorry. Okay, so backpacking gear item number two, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Backpacking gear item number two that I refuse to ditch for ultralight is my sleeping clothes. So an extra set of clothes to sleep in, obviously. It's sleeping clothes. Do I really have to explain what sleeping clothes is? I literally f***ing sweat so much when I'm hiking. On my Appalachian Trail through hike, for instance, when I was going through the south or even the admitted, the, the mid-Atlantic part of the trail when it was really hot, really humid, I was drenched in sweat. Like, I'm, I'm not just saying like a couple sweat patches on my shirt, I'm saying literally could have taken my shirt or my shorts and wrung them out and had sweat just like drip down. My legs, I've got really hairy legs just like Joe Biden and- <laughs> I got Lana, I got hairy legs. Just sweat so much. And so the idea of like finishing my day and then having to stay in those wet, gross clothes and then sleep in them. And even when they dry, they're so coarse and sweaty with all the salt and shit. Like that just drove me absolutely insane and so I'm always gonna have to carry sleeping clothes. I've used this picture before, but let me see if I can like zoom this picture in and show you guys how sweaty. This was taken in Shenandoah National Park in Virginia 
and I'm not sure how well it's gonna come out on the computer screen, but if you zoom in, you can literally see like drops of sweat that are just like all over my body, on my forehead, on my arms. You can see how wet my shirt is like absolutely miserable. And on those really hot days on my Appalachian Trail through hike, and there was a lot of these days, by the way, one of the only things that kept me going was knowing that at the end of the day, at least I could change out of these disgusting sweaty clothes and put on something that was dry and relatively clean. So yes, I could probably just sleep in my hiking clothes, but it would be really, really miserable. And honestly, that's just something I cannot give up for ultralight as bad as I might want to. And while we're on the topic of sleeping gear, this third item that I refuse to ditch for ultralight is my like comfy sleeping inflatable stuff. So basically an inflatable sleeping pad and an inflatable pillow. So many of you probably know that I'm primarily a hammock camper or I have been up to this point, but towards the end of last summer, I did start hiking with a tent in all of this summer and probably the foreseeable future, I'm gonna be using a tent. And I've since bought an inflatable pillow and an inflatable sleeping pad. And this is one of those things where I probably could go a little bit lighter if I just didn't bring the pillow and use like my jacket or my pack or something for a pillow. And if I just use like a really short foam sleeping pad. And I will say, I've actually used my Thermarest Z-Lite pad plenty of times on the ground before. It's not great. I have slept okay on it. Usually when I'm just like so exhausted from hiking all day, I'll still get a good night's rest on it, which is honestly kind of disproving the point I'm about to make, but this pad weighs about 10 ounces. This is the uh, small version of the Neo Air. No, the Thermarest X, Z <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thermarest Z Light sleeping pad. So yeah, 10 ounces and the inflatable pad that I just bought, which is downstairs, so I don't feel like going to get it, but you guys know what the Neo, the Neo Air X Lite looks like. It's been super popular for years and years and years, but I'm just behind the curve, I guess. But that thing only weighs 12 ounces, so two ounces more for a fully inflatable sleeping pad that also has a much better R value or R rating. And as far as the pillow goes, I, I need like something really comfortable to like sleep on. I've used just like clothes before as a pillow. It works fine in the hammock because you don't really need that much of a pillow because you're, you know, the banana like kind of curved shit. But when I'm on the ground, I just need something really comfortable back there or I won't get any sleep. I won't have as much energy the next day and my hike's gonna suck. So pillow, can't ditch it. Maybe in the future, if I just get tougher, I'll be able to. Definitely worth it in my opinion. And next item. Item number four that I refuse to ditch for ultralight. This is the one that's really gonna get people. My stove and my cooking stuff. Folks, I can't, I just can't ditch it, I'm sorry. I know that like cold soaking and just going stoveless is super popular with ultralight hikers and it makes sense, that shit weighs a lot. And I could probably save like close to a pound if I got rid of that, which kills me to say out loud, honestly, because I really am trying to go as light as possible, but ugh, I'm just a picky eater. And I feel like if I didn't have a hot meal that is much better tasting and much more satisfying at the end of the day, I don't think I would eat enough calories. Dinner usually makes up at least half of my calories in a day of hiking, honestly. I kind of like just load up at the end of the day because the food is just so much better. I have a hard time eating like a ton of food throughout the day when I'm hiking. And so I'm just, a, I'm just honestly afraid that it would take away enjoyment because it's super satisfying to have, you know, a burrito full of freaking hot sauce and rice and pepperoni and at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm just afraid that my energy levels would suffer and it would just like, have a really bad effect on my hike. Cold food, like that's been sitting in a jar that honestly grosses me the fuck out. And like, I've seen plenty of people cold soak, like plenty of people I hiked with on the Appalachian Trail did it. And it's just like, it's it just looks so gross. Like I don't think I could eat it. And maybe I need to try it, but honestly, I don't see myself ditching the stove anytime soon. Gear item number five that I refuse to ditch for ultra light. This one, I'll be honest, I feel like it doesn't quite fit the mold as much, but I like having lists of five. So this one is paper, maps, and guidebooks, honestly. And again, this is the thing where most ultralight hikers are not gonna like put themselves at risk and not carry like a map or some shit. I'm not trying to generalize too much there. But even when I'm hiking trails that have like a gut hook or some sort of you know, digital navigation that I can use. I still like to have a map with me. I, I still love using gut hook, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, there's just something about having that information in front of me on like a map that just, it's more satisfying. And of course, like the, the safety reasons are pretty obvious. I'm probably not even gonna talk about those. Like it's obviously a lot safer to not rely on 
an electronic version of your navigation that could run out of battery. So it just seems that these days people prefer the uh, the apps and stuff over the maps and the apps over the maps. And I'm not like that, honestly. I've got all these maps here. This is just some of them. You probably see the ones like up on my wall. I don't think you can really see that over there, but I love maps. Even I even buy maps for like trails and areas that I'm not even planning to hike in just because I want to like check them out. And they're fun for just planning trips, but they're also just fun to have on the trail too. And I don't know, I just, I freaking love maps, okay? So we're just gonna throw some more gear over there. I feel like I didn't really have a good reason for this one. I basically just said that I like maps, but hey, backpacking gear item number six that I refuse to ditch for ultralight is your mom. Let me know what you guys think of this list in the comments. Let me know what items you refuse to ditch for ultralight, even though you might be able to get away with with not hiking with them without them is what I should have said. I like to talk about ultralight. I feel like it's kind of controversial in some way. So I don't know. I'm probably gonna make more videos like this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash like, and that's gonna do it. That was really weird.